live here in the village, if I'd heard anything at a select board meeting about our village water system being super low because of the, of the drought, and I said I hadn't, so that's nothing I need to ask about. Is anything you have um, heard about? If you want to ask about it during the meeting, we could, but there's no, there's no, um, we're not experiencing any problems with that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, then I won't worry yeah. about it. I won't interrupt me. I just, I just, I just wondered. Um, okay. Thank you. Hey, Frank, did you see your picture in the paper this last week? <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> yep. Jerry was so funny. He goes, you got to know this guy in the orange jacket. I don't know his name. You, I'm sure you know him. I said, yeah, that's Frank. <laughs> <laughs> yep. All right, it's six o'clock and we don't have anyone else in the waiting room. I'll keep an eye on that just in case, but um, we'll start this with our, um, our script for the, uh, these COVID times as chair of the Rochester Select Board. I find that due to the state of emergency declared by Governor Scott as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic and pursuant to addendum six to executive order 01-20, and Act 92, this public body is authorized to meet electronically. In accordance with Act 92, there is no physical location to observe and listen contemporaneously to this meeting. However, in accordance with the temporary amendments to the open meeting law, I confirm that we are providing public access to the meeting by either telephone, video, or other electronic means, and we're using the Zoom platform for that. <clears throat> and. Um, all members of the board have the ability to communicate contemporaneously during this meeting through this platform and the public has access to contemporaneously listen and if desired participate in this meeting and you can find out how to get this information this contact by either contacting the town clerk to request the invitation specifically on email or you can view it on the town website or you can find it on the publicly posted agendas for the meeting um and here you here we are and nobody else is in the waiting room so at this time we'll um ask for any additions to the agenda as it was posted does anyone have anything else they want to add to that you and i have a question yeah um, we have the tax map um contract that we need to renew. Is that something that I would have to put on the next agenda for you to approve and sign? Yeah, we wouldn't be able to approve that tonight, but I guess we could um, to put that onto the um, okay. meeting, the agenda for the next, next yeah. Okay. Let me write that. Uh, Robert Frank's here. Mm -hmm. Yep, Robert, do you have something you wanna to add to the agenda? Uh, regarding the Board of Civil Authority of Rochester, minutes that have been uh, denied by me regarding the election in 2018, I really, truly want to bring this up to Frank, to Patty, to you, to Martha, and Nancy. All right. All right. So, um, the get on to the agenda so um speaking of minutes we have the prior meetings minutes from the september 14th meeting and i didn't see any corrections to those so i'd move to approve those i second it all in favor aye aye okay and then we also had our special select board meeting on sept 20 september 21st to um deal with the tax rate and I, that looked right to me. I'd move to approve those minutes. And I second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. May I interrupt? Who's that, Robert? It is Robert. Yep. And I'm, I'm requesting the minutes from the two meetings that you and Patty just shared to make them public to the public. They, they are public to the public. They are, okay. you can go onto the website and then, and read those um, if you want. 
The meetings okay, are also so covered. Let, yeah. let, they're let, also let, covered in Zoom. You can actually go on to the town website and click right on the link to the Zoom coverage of the meeting. So then you have not only the written minutes, but the actual um, um, video documentation of, of the meeting. So you have ample opportunities to check those out. And there were articles so, about them in the Herald as well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's just go back. Uh, I requested minutes of the Board of Civil Authority from Rochester for the last two years. You, Patty, Frank, they've all received the emails of last night, including Will Senning, Eric, where are the minutes of the Board of Civil Authority of Rochester reflecting back to 2018 election day at 712 in the morning? I think what happened? That what happened, I think, is extremely covered by the media. The Board of Civil Authority meant to count the votes and then immediately communicated those votes to the state of Vermont, which then, of course, you have all sorts of media. You got NPR, you got the White River Valley Herald, you got the, I mean, the minutes that the Board of Civil Authority meeting for that election was our report of those minutes was the results of the election. That's the action of the Board of Civil Authority. The results of the election, the results of the election were not prefaced by what happened on the town clerk's office of Rochester in 2018 by Joanne McDonald illegally towing cars we, we we really need to get into this because going forward with covid the new election polling station and the rules i i, I really want to put this forth to you dune patty frank and anyone else including martha the select board of rochester does not create the rules for election day the, no, board, the, uh, the authority yeah. does the um, um the town clerk sets the rules for election day no actually, yes. actually yes yeah but okay. but in terms of your your request your original request for minutes to the meeting there was no civil board of authority meeting that um dealt with the issue that you're referring to this is the the meeting of the board of civil authority was to conduct the counting of the votes in the election. The actual conducting of the voting is under the purview of the town clerks, which it will Joanne be- Joanne McDonald yeah. committed in the Valley News that she would go before the Board of Civil Authority after she did illegal actions on the town clerk's office of Rochester, towing cars, screaming at 7, 12 in the morning. I'm asking for those minutes, Doom. She never went to, that meeting never happened, Robert that they she dealt with that mistake on her part and no it's not a mistake on her part it's a mistake on the town's part where are the minutes of joanne mcdonald's commitment to go to the in front of the board of civil authority of rochester to present her misconduct I, against the town that meeting did not happen that meeting should have happened but it did not happen, so there are no minutes for it. So, oh, so you're yeah. you're you're saying to me that Joanne McDonald's commitment to the Board of Civil Authority of Rochester, announced in the paper, the Valley News, you're telling me that Joanne McDonald never shared those minutes. There were no minutes. Why were there not no minutes? I already answered that question three times now because that meeting did that meeting did not happen. June, uh, I'm gonna make I'm gonna make I'm gonna make public this quote to Patty, Nancy, Martha, Frank, and Jeff. At ten twenty three, election day two thousand eighteen, you approached Rob McFadden's bus and you had the authority or the audacity to approach him and say, Rob, don't you know we have unwritten rules in this town? We, let me requote that. This is Doom, the chair of the select board of Rochester, approaching the bus that was parked legally on the town parking lot. And you said to Rob McFadden, Rob, don't you know we have unwritten rules in this town? 
Yes. That's a question that I think Nancy, Martha, Frank, and Patty should look at. Can you just think about the words, Rob? We heard that already, Robert. So the point is there was an ongoing understood policy unwritten by Joanne, which then we corrected by putting in writing in response to the uproar that ensued from this. And it was that if you're going to be campaigning and leaving campaign signs that you needed to be present to do that. That's not a- So, it, so yeah. let so me that's ask- that's what me. happened and it was not- No, no, I, no, that's not what happened. So the towing of, of uh, the truck from the town parking lot in 2018 on election day, Yes. Who who paid the town? Who who paid the fee? Joanne did. Right. Yes. So why? why in, are, in recognition of her her mistake and her regret for her actions there. It is not her mistake. It's the town of Rochester's mistake to make certain that the town clerk, just as I put forth to you, Patty, and Frank Severy last night, with emails supporting of. Uh, support from the uh, Mr. Senning up at the State House, Secretary of State's office, to look into this. This is total improper. All I'm trying to say to you, Doom, Frank, Patty, is to make certain that election rules are regulated, announced, and publicized to the public so a candidate cannot... Do you know, do you know at 10 of 8 on the election day of 2018, Joanne McDonald insisted that Robert McFadden come to the town of Rochester to put, to pay a towing fee. We changed our entire campaign. We were to be in Bethel at eight o'clock in the morning. We had to come under Joanne McDonald's illegal jurisdiction to say, you need to come to Rochester to pay a, a towing fee. Robert and I, rode into Rochester, and then you step onto the bus and say, don't you know we have unwritten rules in this town? So we moved the entire campaign from all the electoral votes and people from Bethel to Rochester, and then we were exposed to Joanne McDonald screaming and yelling, and then you come out and say, hey, Rob, don't you know we have unwritten rules in this town? What the hell are the unwritten rules? So that yeah. ruined the entire campaign. And yeah. Joanne McDonald, Joanne McDonald, I was at Deering's that morning after this happened. It was the most, most defilement of democracy. I ran up to Rob, uh, to JD's. John was on his way to tow the truck illegally. He tows the truck, and Joanne McDonald says, you can't do that. And he's like, it's already done. So I, I don't really, Martha can report whatever she wants to report. Nancy can, you know, talk. I don't really care. I just want to make certain that 2020 is locked down with rules and regulations. At the at the high school, not at the town clerk's office. So we're we're we we are going to go back into Joanne McDonald's conduct as the town clerk in 2018, even after 2020's election, because that was a debauchery. Dude, let me ask you this question. Just a oh. second. I had see Pat has got a comment she wants to make here. Have my hand up. Yeah. Um, I take the unwritten rule comment as referring to something that is like common courtesy and common sense. Those are the golden rule, the unwritten rules. That's what I think that that those two words really meant in 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 that day is that we we exercise common courtesy towards one another in this town and we exercise common sense. And that, those are unwritten rules, kind of like the golden rule. It's no, Patty, no, no. Unwritten okay. rules in the democracy of the United States of America are unwritten, and you cannot 
you cannot subject a candidate to be reprimanded by a town clerk who's illegally performing those rules. And she, so, uh, you, you keep to, you keep insisting that she illegally did that, but in the reality of the Vermont statutes, the town clerk has got the jurisdiction for conducting the elections, and she does have the say over what what happens in the polling in the polling place. So it's you can back off on the illegally. There's no question that it was it was a mistake, and she overreacted, and she felt terrible for that. In my approaching the bus and trying to enter in dialogue with you was an attempt to smooth the waters and, and calm everyone down. I see that two years later, it still has not taken that effect. So I suppose you would rather you just had no communication. June, let me just say this. You quoted me as this obsession with regards to 2018's election day from 7-12 till noon that day. You communicated it's my obsession. It is not my obsession. It's the democracy of America's obsession. I don't, if, if Joanne McDonald made a major, major, major mistake that day, I could not believe what I experienced. At 712, she was screaming at me, telling me to leave to get my truck off the parking lot. It wasn't my truck. I didn't know whose truck it was. That ruined our campaign. You know whose truck it was? It was Rob McFadden's truck, and we have we have video of the legal distance of where a truck should be parked, as re, as said in the uh, select board before you and Frank. Rob McFadden or Rob Cratley has the measurements, and he was totally legal. Okay, so I think that what I want to bring this around to, and which is, I think, in essence, the point that I'm guessing you want to make is that that nothing like this debacle happens on the election that is coming up, right? Dune, that's exactly right. It's right. not about Robert Franks. It's about the democracy of America. Right. So and and all, I want, it is, all, is, I all I want to make certain is that, yeah. that no, hold on. When you say okay, that means Robert, shut up. The the no, you say that. State, the, there is on the agenda <laughs> an issue that deals with this very topic and this when and and it's addressing the very thing that you're concerned about, and it's already on the agenda so we'll it'll, um hopefully that will put you at ease a little bit with that there's clearly stated um you know directives about how things are going to work with the the temporary polling station down at the school okay so um you were included you patty frank were included with the messages and emails i sent off to will sunning at the secretary of state's office eric covey I just want to make certain that they are in, in, in sequenced, synced with what is going to go on for election day in 2020 on November 3rd, because I guarantee you something is going to go wrong. And by the way, there are. What do you mean? Some, well, okay. You're, you're, how can you guarantee something yeah. like that, Robert? Do you have yeah. something planned? No, what I'm saying is, is that the town clerk, okay, there are state rules regarding election day. They are, they are the rules from the state, the secretary of state's office. The town clerk then has jurisdiction over those micro rules that she can just throw out, like towing a truck. I don't want that to happen again. Yeah, I don't anticipate that happen again. Unless well, where someone parks a truck in a in a spot where it's been dedicatedly said that it there should be nothing parked, then we would tell something. But uh, the parking rules spot, will that be parking clearly spot where the truck written down. Yeah. The, yeah, the parking spot where the truck was parked was not designated. Right. As We're talking about in in November of 2020 now. That's 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 the main thing here is what's happening now and going forward. We've we understand that it was 
um, it was a mess before there was a problem and we've taken steps to clarify what is to happen in this next election. And I think that is what you're concerned about, correct? That is all I'm concerned about. Right. Just make, just make certain that everyone, whether it's a, whoever votes, whoever moves onto the parking lot or drives onto the parking lot, whether it's a candidate or a 93 year old senior citizen, they, all they want to do is vote. Yep. yep. But they don't want to have constrictions of, of what happened in 2018. Okay. Well, the, um, to be I don't think any voters were constricted in 2018. That was actually non Rochester residents that were affected by that. So it's not, that did not, that's not what happened in 2018. No voters were constricted or, or refused access. So let's right. be clear about that. Um, Voters were, were, voters were constricted, a candidate was constricted and called okay. and summoned by the town clerk to pay a fine for a towing fee. So you might do, you might sit there and say, no, uh, no. Uh, well, you mentioned the constriction of voters and I'm just making the point that um, I don't believe any voters were, were um, blocked or constricted from voting in 2018. So um, if you're a candidate running for select board or the, uh, a Senate seat or the House seat and you're restricted by a town and the chair of the select board of the town you're trying to win votes in, quote, do you, do you not know we have uh, unwritten rules in this town? Okay, we're starting to go in circles now, Robert. If you let us move on, the second thing on the agenda will address this very topic. Okay. Right. And I believe Robert will be voting at Bethel. So, um, you know, unless he's accompanying a, a candidate, um, we, we will be conforming to our, our rules and laws, which we are going to be discussing next. But Robert, you're, you're a, a voter in Bethel. Is that correct? Uh, I'm a voter in the Rutland Windsor County of Vermont. I live in Bethel, but unfortunately what's happened in Rochester during 18 was not proper. So Patty, you're holding me geographically in a voting way. My voting rights are in Rochester or in Bethel, Vermont. You're right, but guess what? Rochester is part of the Rutland Windsor voting district. And that's what I've been standing up for. Right. It's just a public forum. So I just wanted to make it public that you are a Bethel voter. Uh, just for the record. That's all. Well, I'd be more than happy to for you to share my address here at Hooper Hollow. Mm -hmm. So um, can we move on and then we can get to the agenda item that actually addresses this issue? Um, there will be limited parking there this year because school is in session and we're going to have to deal with something different around the parking lot. And there's going to be some different requirements made for that. So we're going to have to address that through signage at the office down at the high school. So that's going to be one thing that's going to change a little bit. It's not going to be an open parking lot. We're going to have to respect that we're at the schoolyard. So that's something that each and every one of us has to be aware of. That's all. Well, Frank, I'm great. I'm glad. I'm happy that you brought that up because the, the current scan document that Doom sent to me is an obsolete document that we that Robert, we the next item on the agenda is the addressing of that issue. So can we move on, please? Yeah, we're, we're going to address that tonight, Robert. Yeah. As well, I you. emailed you, I communicated that in the email to you um, previously. So it's it's um you're you're we're going in circles now. So the, the next item on the agenda before that issue is the approval for Kristen Lapel to be added to the town accounts and her um, position as the, um, the, the treasurer and, and sec not secretary, but I would move to approve adding Kristen Lapel to the town accounts so she can continue to conduct that business. I can second that. Yeah, all in favor? All right. 
Okay, um, Robert. Each, now, now yeah, we have... can I ask one quick question before that? Yeah. Her actual, Kristen's actual title, I thought was assistant town clerk and treasurer. Am I yeah. wrong about that? Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I, I muddled that. Yeah. Okay, so she's assistant town clerk and treasurer. Yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Excuse right. me for interrupting. So now we've come to the amendment to the policy for polling place parking lot and campaign sign rules to accommodate booting, voting at the high school. And I will, um, if you want, I will um, read those if I can shorten this window here because I didn't get them to print properly. Okay. Um, Hello. Oh, nope, I cannot minimize that, let's see. And let's see, somebody wants to get in while I'm at it. Now, it will not let me minimize that. Does someone got that printed out that they could read? I have it. Who's got that? Nancy. I think, think it was Nancy Woolley. Nancy, would you be willing to share that with us? Because I, I my computer won't let me get to that screen. Does Julie have it? You, you got to turn your vol volume up, Nancy. Um, I've got to get it. Does Julie have it? Yes, I do. All right. Would you, you mind read reading Julie? that with us, Julie? Sure. Um, okay. So the presiding officer in Rochester, it's the town clerk has jurisdiction over whether vehicles can be parked in the town office parking lot and where political signs can be placed on election day. 17 VSA 2508 for the November 3rd, 2020 general election, because of COVID-19 regulations, the polling place will be moved to the Rochester High School building. The pr presiding officer, Rochester Town Clerk, has jurisdiction over where vehicles can be parked in the Rochester school parking lot and where political signs can be placed on election day, 17 BSA 2508. Social distancing will apply. The presiding officer will not allow signs to be placed in the ground or affixed to anything on the property of the polling place. Individuals are allowed to stand and hold a sign in a designated area near the entrance to the marked polling place at the Rochester High School building, so long as a voter is not hindered or impeded from going into or out of the polling place. In future elections, the same policy will apply at the entrance to the town office parking lot abutting the school street. Exiting polls or surveys can be done outside of the polling place as long as a voter voluntarily offers to participate and the person conducting the polls or surveys does not hinder or impede the progress of the voter as he or she enters or leaves the polling place. Again, 17 VSA 2508. When voting is done at the Rochester Town Clerk's building, public parking in the town office parking lot on election day is not allowed so as to provide parking spaces for voters. Individuals and businesses who regularly use the parking lot must find parking parking in another area of town. The one exception to this parking policy is for those persons employed in the town office and poll workers who will be required to park at the entrance of the parking lot. Okay. So can I bring something in here? Inter 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 the, the, the publishing company in uh, Rochester, Vermont has access to the parking lot at the town clerk's office. So right. So how does that? Did you not hear the last paragraph of what she just read that addressed that specifically? That on the, on the election day, they will need to um, park elsewhere and, and free up that parking lot so, to, so voters can move in and out. So you're telling me that the parking lot is not, the, the polling station is not the town clerk's office, it's the high school? This year. This year, yes. Yes, this year is at the high school. And that's why we amended the policy that was um, approved 
in 2019 to clarify any questions about this. And we modified it to deal with the situation that we're experiencing here where the polling will happen at the high school. We've also held two elections there, Doon. That's true. Uh, already and have worked out pretty well. Yeah, the primary worked fine. I helped with that. So I would. Um, move there is a there is maybe something we could throw in there. We may we may want to add that masks are required when entering the building. It's probably, okay. Yeah, I we think that's appropriate that we have in that ordinance. So people know that uh, that would go in the first, first part, I think. Yeah, that I would agree. J just so people are aware of it. I th well, I would think also the last two elections we had, Julie had maybe a couple people that one refused and uh, another was not uh, noticed until it was too late. So, um, but I think everybody was pretty good about doing that. So we've had good luck so far with that. So the, the high school parking lot is kind of uh, a tough place for a candidate to arrive uh, on election day. What I'm suggesting to the town of Rochester is to uh, seclude an area where candidates can be presented properly, legally, and according to the, the laws of Vermont and the town of Rochester before election day so they don't arrive and then all of a sudden get reprimanded for being in a place where they shouldn't be. No, I we are going to establish an area for them, Robert, outside along the entryway to the high school. That'll be approximately 12 feet from the, the uh, paved part of the entrance. And we're going to flag it off and we'll have a sign there for campaign personnel. Well, Frank, what day will that happen? Will it happen? That's, that's going to happen the day before. I'll, I'll do it. I've done it the last two and I'll put, put all that stuff out. Um, it'll just be flag and tape and we'll have some cones and, and uh, it'll be pretty well spelled out. I think that's great. I think it's great that you took the responsibility to do that because candidates have to move from every town all day and they don't want to step onto a village and then be reprimanded for being illegally standing there. Yep, that's why we put together this amendment to the um, the campaign sign rules to, to make sure that this is all very clear. Well, thank God. All right, so I would move to approve that um, policy with the addition of the text about the mask. I, I have a comment. Yeah, Bruce. Um, you can't make masks 100% mandatory because there are some people who are unable to wear a mask. So there's got to be room for an exception in there. Uh, I think I think Julie has uh, in the past that anybody who doesn't have a mask or won't wear a mask that they can uh, take we can give them their ballot and they can vote out outside. Yeah, as long as it's not a hundred percent mandatory. Right. I think Julie does a, had yeah. done a fairly decent job policing what she needs to do there. And she'll have control of that on that day. All right, thank you. Well, yeah. Bruce, I wanna thank you for bringing that up because I've been suffering through a major uh, neck and, and ear issue. I cannot wear a mask at max and I apologize. I wish I could, but I cannot. So there are a lot of people out there that whether they're elders or whether they're, you know, dealing with serious situations, I cannot wear a mask. So I don't know how we're going to deal with that part of it, but, you know, maybe you could just bring the ballots out to the parking lot. And if they don't have a mask, you just deliver the uh, ballot to the car and they, they vote. I think that the, um, as it turned out, the, the handful of how many people, Julie, did you find that was an issue with? The, not I, a lot. I had one, uh, actually two, yes. Two people. So um, I, I think that we're able to, to work around that. 
No. So back to my um, um, my um, proposal to approve that amended policy with the um, with the takes of with the addition of the um, the um, how well how do you want to change the wording that masks are are required but will be accommodated if not um, physically possible. Yeah. Well, one of the Duna, I'll, I'll throw this out to you. Uh, because of my situation, I apologize to people for not wearing a mask. But I wish that if we have to wear a mask, or supposedly wear a mask, I would, I would like to have a little badge that says I'm exempted because I cannot wear a mask. I'm seriously. Yeah. They, so, uh, I mean, they tried those um a face shield. That would be a way of, of going to going forward with it but um well it's um but in so if in this case if you were a resident of rochester and voting in rochester um it would be you would communicate to julia that julia i can't wear a mask and and she would give you the ballot to vote outside and then give it back to her so then it would you know we would you know we would deal with that yeah i think that would be in that this would, town yeah that would be proper yeah but what, what, what Bruce said is very important for the elderly, elderly people. There are yep. people that are on oxygen. They can't, you know, and, they want to vote. Think that um, to a large extent, some of these people that have, have real um, compromised situations, they would um, more than likely um, vote absently and, and, and mail in their ballot and not, not feel the need to to physically come and expose themselves to an uncomfortable situation or an unhealthy situation if they're really <laughs> compromised. Yeah. Well, sadly, there's a um, there's a group of the American people and populace that um, prefer to vote in person and not by mail. Yep. Yep. So um, back to the um, um, I, I moved to to approve that that policy with the modified text regarding mask. Pat, are you talking? I think I saw your mouth move. I second that. <laughs> All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. The, um, the hardware can make can provide a couple of those face shields so that Julie has them if she needs okay, them. So someone wants, yeah. um, I, have, I have some Pat. Yeah. yeah. So um Frank, you did a little bit of um, work around the removal of, of sediment on the um, um, downstream from the Route 100 bridge in the north end of town. Well, I, I went down and had a look at it. And uh, I'm going to, uh, tomorrow I have to meet with Mike LaPointe down at the Mendel property to finalize that. And um, I'm going to see if maybe he would come by and take a picture of what um, is the issue there and send it to Jared um, and go from there. Mm -hmm. So the Dean Mendel project is uh, the final uh, inspection is tomorrow at 2.30. And so I'll meet with Mike down there. I, I think Joan isn't going to participate, but I think anything, I think we've done everything that we needed to on that project. Is that correct, Joan, as far as our paperwork? Just one last thing <laughs> to put in a request for a reimbursement to the town, which I, I'm working out with, with Mike. Well, okay. can I add something here, Frank and Joan? Joan, thank you for all the things you've been doing. The D. Mandel project needs a, uh, I'm thinking at least a 12, 12 foot wide culvert to go under that road. More than twelve feet. Yeah. Thinking, Joan, you're right. Something about it's it's about it's at least ten feet wide, isn't it, Frank? The cold yeah, it's pretty wide, but it's not wide enough <laughs> um, for what. And the because of Irene, it's changed so much in the storms every now and then. It's this was just a band aid, and it's going to have it's it'll happen again. There's just you know they they don't allow you to do all that much there, and uh, so we're just. We're just doing the best we can with it. 
And yeah, this it's, is it's, a, a pass through for us anyway. It, it's a, a culvert is, is uh, the state of Vermont's responsibility, you know, since it's um, under Route 100. And from what I've been told, um, you know, they acknowledge that what's really needed at that spot is a bridge, um, but it's not a priority for them right now. So until that gets fixed the way it needs to be, um, as Frank said, it's this is just a, a temporary fix for uh, the Mendels, which we hope will last for a while. Uh, can I add something? Uh, Joan, I've been up without water for three weeks. I have no water up at the top of the mountain. Nothing. And I know what's going to happen. Um, Dean, his pond is probably dry as uh, dust. And um, actually, it's full. It's not. <laughs> it's got a couple inches of water in it. Dean Mendel has water in his pond? Not yeah, very much, but he does have water. Well, and he gets a little bit of stream there, and there's a spring up beyond his house that's, that's running endlessly that Frank Twitchell has rights to, that, well, that retained rights to. Well, I hope it all works out, but that culvert under uh, that Route 100 uh, piece of road, like Joan said, or Frank, you said, it's not 12, it's got to be 14. You know, it's a, it's a gigantic uh, hydraulic flow of water. And I met with the uh, town of Bethel today up here on Hooper Hollow, and uh, we went through all the hydraulics and the Atacuichi grants and all the stuff. I could write a book about what I experienced today. And, you know, the town of Bethel is very gracious, but they're concerned about what the hell is going on up here. Because the Atacuichi um, uh, grants, they don't listen to the people that live on the roads that they're actually giving money to through the towns. Seriously, it, it's a big, it's a, it's a really good discussion because it's like they want to make certain that hydraulic connection is synchronized with uh, <clears throat> water flow. So, um, any, um, Joan, do you have any um, updates with them um, that would relate to that or anything else that you've been working on? Uh, everything else is stuff you've heard about before. I'm doing, you know, still working on reimbursements from the same place we've been talking about for over a year. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm doing what's needed from my end to gather information for the single audit um, and just generally keeping track of other things. Um, uh, so nothing really to report. All right. Um, a couple of other things I'd mentioned, Dune. I uh, went with Jeff and we toured the, the town office there. And I happened to notice that the chimney is about ready to fall off the roof. So I've, I've talked to Dave Curtis to maybe get up, see if he could do it. And uh, I've got to meet with him again, but I'll be doing that right off. I also had the furnace clean in the building because it hadn't been done in five years. And I'm going to disconnect the heat to the old garage. So maybe we can save a little money there. Um, but that's about it on that. And Nancy and I worked in the basement today so I'm sorting things out <laughs> that's quite a job and we're going to talk to the sheriff to see if there's anything there that he needs and wants and yeah. Yeah. there's a couple of things that'll go into the town stuff but most of it is going to the dump mm -hmm. as I can figure and Nancy figures all righty yep Doom, Doom, may I uh yeah, Robert. Communicate this with uh, everyone that's uh, on the, online. There's a positive word that you always say, and it's onward. Doom, are you listening? I, I am. I'm, I'm making onward. Yeah. So yeah. let's just 
let's just try to do whatever we can to move onward. <laughs> yeah. It's a very inspiring word. Well, it seems like it's uh, it, it, it's a way to um, keep moving forward and, um, you know, not getting stuck. So, right. Yeah. So whether it's whether it's Dean Mendel's problem or my problem up here or whatever, your your word onward is incredibly encouraging. That's what I was hoping. <laughs> we need to move onward. <laughs> yeah. Um, onward. Yes. The um is there so speaking of that word onward is there anything else that anyone wanted to address tonight there it looks like we've covered um what's on the agenda and we'll um is there anything we need to do an executive session about the employee employment situation i have a, a a small um small bit to report but not not much but we could uh, uh, return to executive session to discuss employee um, the situation so June, um, if you're going to right. be if you're going to adjourn the regular meeting and go into an executive session, would you be? Is that need, something I need to stick around for? Would you be doing? Uh, no, not there's nothing that we'd be taking any action on. This okay. is this all, right. is all in the just you know information gathering stage. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, it's Robert again from Bethel, not Rochester. Yeah. But I do want to thank uh, Patty and Nancy and Frank and Martha and Jeff and Dune to move forward, move onward. Yeah. All thank right. you. Thank yeah. you. Thanks, Robert. Yep. Yeah. We'll see you around town, everybody. All right. Hey, Thanks, maybe Jeff. Jeff has something. Jeff, do you have something you want to say? Um. Somewhat overwhelmed um, <laughs> with uh, you know what our needs are in the valley. I'm, I'm sure I'll you know we'll find more of it as we look. Yeah. Um, yeah. As Robert said, yeah. onward. Onward, right? Yeah. Onward and upward. So okay. are we are we adjourned? Or I think we're adjourning. Yes. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, God bless America. Thanks, yep. everybody. All right. Good night, Robert. Good night. Good night, Good night all.